Welcome to episode nine of No BSTS. And in this one, we're going to look at utility types. Now, utility types are a mechanism, a generics mechanism in TypeScript that you can use to essentially create another type from an existing type in interesting ways. So let's go take a look over at the utility types webpage. And over here, we got a list of all the different utility types that come out of the box. And in fact, actually, you can go online and find more user generated utility types, but this is the, just the ones that come out of the box. And there's some popular ones, for example, partial is very popular. Record is also very popular and we've covered that before. So I'm gonna go through a few in code and we can see where we get to. So first thing I'm gonna do is create a new file called utility types onets So the first thing I'm gonna do is define a new user type, I'll call it my user. And in there, it's gonna have a name, which is a string and an ID, and also a string. And then let's say an optional email. And I'm gonna have a merge function. So let's go create that. And that merge function is gonna take a user and it's going to return a user. But the idea in this case is that we want to have an overrides. And that's gonna be an object that has optional fields for name and ID and email that we can then override the user record with. So if we wanna take the existing user record and then just change, say, name, we can do that. So let's go and make this a new one. I'll copy and paste it. Okay, that's my user optionals. And I'll make that the type on overrides over here. And in this case, we are going to make everything optional, right? It's basically just my user, but everything made optional. And then our merge function is just going to take, make a new object and return user and overrides, but overrides is gonna come after user and therefore override any of the same keys or fields. So let's console log that out and see if it works. We'll merge. We'll create a new record called name is Jack, ID is foo, and we'll give me an email. And now this is not working because we don't have that second overrides, but if I were just going and create an empty value in there, that's fine because there's no required fields in it. But if I wanted to go and change, for example, email to don't email, baz at don't email .com. I can now go here and let's try it out. Let's, uh, let's run this thing. So MPX TS node and then utility types one. Cool. So now don't email baz has now overridden don't email at don't email .com. So that's a you know, nice little function there. But here's the problem. So if I go and add onto my user a new thing, so let's take an example like phone then it's not gonna be tracked in my user optionals. Plus, I'm not a big fan of like copying and pasting code. I like the whole don't repeat yourself or dry mechanism. So is there a way that I can create this thing on the fly? Well, yes, there is. So let's go back over here to utility types. And the utility type that we're looking for is this partial one. And partial takes a type and then makes everything in it optional. So let's try that out. Let's go in, instead of defining my user optionals like this, let's go and comment that out. And I'll create a new type called my user optionals and just equate that to partial of my user. And we'll bring back our old friend command K command I and we'll see that in this case it's taken every field in my user and then made it optional. So where name was required before, now it's optional. Where ID was required before, now it's optional. Email and phone are just as optional as they were before. Really nice, right? And so anytime I go and change or add onto my user, I automatically get a new my user optionals that has all of that, all those existing fields, but made optional. So really clean and simple. Okay, so let's try another one. Let's try required. So I'm going to create a new one called required my user. And then use that required utility type and point it at my user. And now again, let's use command K, command I. 
And we can see that email is now no longer optional. So we've taken off the optionality by using that utility type. And again, required my user is going to track with whatever changes we make to my user. Another great utility type is pick. So let's go take a look at the definition of that. Now pick takes a type, but also a list of keys. And it will go and pick out from that type the specific fields that you want. So let's try and make a new user that just has email and name. And we'll use pick. And we'll again point at my user. But in this case, and this is really cool again, and I love this, we can basically go and select which fields we want. Oh, we want email. Yes, absolutely. We want name. Sure, yeah, let's, uh, let's bring in name just like that. So if we do our old friend command K, command I, we can see that just email and name is defined as email, but optional and name is required and the types have all been preserved. So as email changes or name might go to an object that has a first and a last in it, that's going to be preserved because it's a relative type. We're generating a new type from an existing type as opposed to doing some kind of copy and paste hackery. Okay, so something I do a lot is I go and create maps. So given an array with objects that have an ID in them, like our my user object, I'm gonna go create a map, which is a record that points from that ID to that record, and it's for fast lookup. So let me go and create that. And it's gonna take a list of users, defined in its array of my users, and it's gonna return a record which is again, one of these utility types and record takes two parameters. The first is an ID type. So in this case, our ID is a type of string. So the key needs to be a type of string. And then the output is my user. All right, and let's just go and build one of these. So I'm gonna use reduce to do this. So I'm gonna take users and then use reduce. And we're gonna start off with an empty object. And then that empty object is going to come in as the accumulator, or we'll just use A. And then V is the record. So in this case, we want to return a new object, all the existing contents of A, and then V.ID as the key pointing at V. All right, let's go and do that. Let's go and take a console log of my map by ID function, apply to some records. So I'll make ID is foo pointing at Mr. Foo and then an ID of Baz pointing at Mrs. Baz. All right, let's give that a try. All right, we had a syntax error up here. Let me go fix that real quick. Excellent, okay. So now we've got foo is pointing at ID foo and name is pointing at Mr. Foo. But what happens if I want to go and get an output of this where it's just the data, right? Well, I don't want in here the ID to be repeated. I've already got the ID as the key. So how do I go and do that dynamically? So I'm going to use another utility function, and this one's called omit. So let's go over here, take a look at omit. And omit takes a type and then keys, and it basically does exactly the opposite of pick. So it removes those. So I'm going to go over here to omit on my user, and then just give it the ID field. All right, nice enough. Let's try this again. We're still getting the ID, so we actually have to go do this. So we need to remove from this, from V, the ID. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna say const ID, I'm gonna pull that out, and then I'm gonna pull everything else out of the incoming record. And then I'm just gonna use ID over here, and then everything else. There you go, nice, okay. So let's do that again. And now, excellent, we're getting foo points to just that record. 
Okay, and as I can see coming out of here, I can see that we are we have that omit. And if I were to go over here and just create a new one called a user without ID, and then equate that to omit, we can see with command K, command I, we have a new record where we just have the name and the email, and then we can use that to just replace that whole omit. Okay, and that's cool, but one last little thing, I'm not really happy with this being just string like that. That's what basically means that I know a priori that this ID is a string, but what happens if I change this to a number? So what I wanna do is try that first. I'm gonna change that to a number and see what breaks. So let's scroll down here. Oh, that's not a number, so let's change that to a two, something like that. That's good. And then down here, these aren't numbers like that. Okay, it's not really breaking, but it should be breaking. So what we really need in here is numbers. So what I'm gonna do is instead point it at my user and then just give it ID. And that's gonna mean that every time the type of ID changes, that record is going to change along with it. Let's give it one more try, make sure everything works out. And the way we go. Cool. Awesome. Great. So that was a quick look at utility types and in particular, the ones that apply to the interfaces, types, and functions that we've been creating so far. In the next one, we're going to take a look at the excellent read only keyword and its associated utility type. But in the meantime, of course, feel free to like and share this video with your friends, subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, click on that bell button and you'll be notified the next time a new no BS TS episode comes out.